a really solid career. Didn't play as much his senior year as I think he would have liked to, but a guy with a, a really soft hands around the paint. You can really see him catch the ball and finish well with either hand. And a large unit. Seen a lot of bigs come off the board early here. You're looking at Jack Salt, Sam Timmons. You're looking at Tohi. A lot of bigs coming off. So uh, going to be a lot of action with the guards as we go through this draft. Sam Timmons, of course, was eligible for pre-selection by Otago uh, by nature from coming from there. But the Bulls snuck him in there. They had him already signed for the 2020 season, so he stayed loyal, which uh, you got to respect. Way to get that pen and ink. Absolutely. Now, with the third pick of the second round in the NBL draft for 2020, the Canterbury Rams have pre-selected Taylor Britt. Taylor Britt, the guard. On the clock are the Nelson Giants. Taylor Britt, guys, a one-test tall black now, of course, having been featured in the, the most recent series. But I think what's most impressive about him is that he got playing time with the Perth Wildcats as a developmental player for mm -hmm. a championship team and played a big role for them. Even as a, coming as a New Zealander, I, I haven't been super familiar with his game, but was really impressed by what I saw when he played with Perth and, and that size that he has with that shooting ability. Bricks well, to teach. to be fair, Bricks well, to, teach. to be fair, he, Damo just gets him replaced all the time. That'll do, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that'll knocked do, out yeah. quite a bit. <laughs> okay, the next pick, fellas, with the fourth pick of the second round in the NBL showdown draft, the Nelson Giants pre-select Mike Carina. Mike Carina on the clock are the Manawatu Jets. Mike Carina was him with the Canterbury Rams last year, Case, uh, going back to where he went to school, the Nelson Giants. Yeah, uh, Nelson Boys College. Uh, another Nelson guy who grew up there. He came up, looked like he was going to have a long career in Nelson. Of course, went down to Canterbury for the last couple of seasons. Some time in Spain as well, but another physically bruising player. And you look at Mika Vacona and Mike Carina as a front court. Uh, watch out, guards. <laughs> you, you other bigs for other teams better call out those screens because they will be coming hard and fast, but his... Uh, another role guy when he's rolling to the rim very physical and good with the finishes I know Mike Fitchett will be probably watching this Mike are you planning on drafting yourself you play coach like you got two great bigs there with Mika and Mike a lot of on balls yeah a lot of <laughs> on balls there so that's that's a great pick uh, you are watching the Cry Goes Wild Sales NBL draft special show this is quite a unique event in uh, New Zealand basketball history it's great to have uh, everybody involved in this Hugh is the next pick in it's not yet it's so not, what we yet. have is a snake draft with the Manawatu Jets coming up next as well they've selected Tom Vodanovic with their first pick yeah it was impressive that he, Tommy V went off with that first pick thought there's some thought he might be a little closer to the second round so they've developed around that once again, all the bigs coming up. Going to be really impressive to see who's Jared Kenny still on the board right now, mm -hmm. Hiram Harris on the board, uh, among guys who you might think would be picked in those first two rounds. So are they going to go with uh, Hiram, really have a bruising physical 4-3 combination where they need a, a point guard like Jared Kenny to start leading the way? Uh, the team building that's involved in this is really impressive. And uh, I'm post the draft, I'd love to hear some more about the machinations that got these guys to where they go because a lot of work to Hugh, try and get these guys together. Hugh, how many games a round or a week do these teams play? Three. Three. Three at most, so, some rounds two. And then, so yeah. therefore we're in this, in this show here, this hour we selected basically the starting fives. But the benches will be called on and that's what the second half of oh, the yeah. night will be. A lot of it's, basketball in one week, guys. I've got to interrupt you, sorry, because the pick yes. is in with the fifth pick of the second round in the NBL draft. The Manawatu Jets select Hiram Harris on the clock, the Taranaki Airs. Hiram Harris, I saw him go well for Southland last year, earned his way into a tall black squad selection from coach Pat O'Cameron. Great to see him with the Jets. Another disappointment for Hugh Bain and not selected there. Um, I'm keep, Plenty of time. Keep up alive, Hugh. Plenty of time. Keep up Mass alive. Massive Jets punisher, but Hiram Harris, uh, he developed as well very quickly. Really, really well. I mean, he's always had a nose for the basketball. It reminds me a little bit of Mika Vakona and his style of play, the way he always gets into it. But once again, a guy we saw develop in the Australian NBL last year, got to play with LaMelo Ball, and I think really picked up a lot of work ethic. You know, under how hard you have to be to get to that level. So playing over there this season and as a developmental player, getting playing time effectively as a, as a developmental player doesn't happen very often. So this is another guy. You look at that front court now, v Vodanovic at the, uh, at the four. You've got Hiram Harris at the three. Those are some physical players that are going to be difficult to keep off the offensive glass. And really another bruising front court being put together by Tim McTammany down there in, in uh, Manawatu. But out West Auckland this year. Absolutely, yeah. West Auckland will be the man of two Jets and the rest of the sales NBL teams with the sixth pick of the second round of the NBL draft. The Taranaki Airs have pre-selected Marcel Jones. Marcel Jones. On the clock are the Otago Nuggets. Well, Marcel Jones has been 
everywhere. I mean, uh, you want to talk about places you play, Romania, Estonia, Bulgaria, I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't even, anything that fin finishes in an IA Tasmania. probably played there. You know, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Mar Marcel is a naturalized Kiwi, uh, so, so he's got, uh, I've played with him before, and he's, uh, like, as a guard, he's also got some forward skills, pretty long, can get some rebounds, but a deaf scorer. He's about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, as well, Marcel Jones. Good length. And he's played against LeBron James at high school. He has. As a, out of Mitre Day, he was on that all-star team. If you've seen the LeBron first uh, documentary about his high school days, you might have seen Marcel Jones. St. Mary St. Vincent, the, uh, the high school of LeBron James. Um, do you want me to list the countries he's played? Let's he's, do it. I want to Zealand, all. Australia, Germany, Finland, Hungary, United Kingdom, Syria, Bosnia, Romania, Italy, Turkey, Kosovo, Slovenia, Bahrain, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia. What was this? Marcel Jones that loves basketball. One heck of a tiki tour. All right, next that's pick that's is in, guys. Trouble. And she's a doozy with the seventh pick of the second round in the NBL draft. The Otago Nuggets select Jared Kenny. There he is. Jared Kenny on the clock. The Otago Nuggets remain with the first pick of the third round. Jared Kenny, a senior, senior tall black out there. Bottom of the second round, the Otago Nuggets absolutely will be licking their lips at that one. You'll see Jared Kenny first, but then you'll only ever see his mullet second. <laughs> and I wonder if Jared has still kept it because he developed that. I mean, he's an excellent player, but his mullet is world class. Well, last time I saw a picture of him, he still had the mullet. This Great. was uh, during COVID. You know, we talk about Mika Vakona and the intangibles he brings to the court, and Jared Kenny is another guy who does this. He's a fantastic leader. Uh, a guy who doesn't need anything extra, just works his tail off when he's on the basketball court. Will be great for the young players that the Otago Nuggets are trying to bring along for next season but defensively he's probably the top defensive point guard in the competition and as a floor general as a guy who gets things together where they need to be he'd also be my number one pick in that in that position but with Jordan Itai uh, as a scorer Jared Kenny as a facilitator they're starting to put this team together in a really nice way. They've got their backcourt they've got their perimeter almost set that is um that is a great pick because we're, a lot of discussions in our WhatsApp group in the last few days weeks we were talking about who would go where. Jared Kenny's name always came up along the top couple of picks. So for the Nuggets to get uh, It's him, a steal. There's no two ways about it's it. An it's an absolute, absolute steal. steal. It's an absolute steal. OK, Nuggets still on the board, of course. Remember, third round starts now. And with the first pick of the third round in the NBL draft, the Otago Nuggets select Jordan Hunt. Jordan Hunt on the clock out of Taranaki Airs. Young, upcoming, forward. This is the perfect compliment to go Jared Kenny and Jordan Natai. Yeah, actually quite surprising that he's gone here. We, were, we weren't sure where he was going to go. A, a lot of talk about where he was going to get selected. He's got great size uh, coming out of that Wellington program and is going to have a chance to go and play somewhere and get some real playing time now. And you see Jordan probably Jordan Nitai probably at the, at the three spot. That opens it up for Jordan Hunt at probably, possibly the four, maybe some five in there as well. But picking some youth, getting a little bit of youth with those old legs of Jared Kenny, so he'll probably appreciate that. Jared Kenny will not appreciate you. <laughs> you're saying he's got old legs. Hutt Valley High represent for Jordan Knight. Uh, biggest problem there they have is deciding who's Geordie, uh, referring to Jordan Nata or Jordan Hunt. Well, it always, goes to, it always goes to age. Now, Jordan, yeah, Nata true. gets the pick. Tell me, the, the, it, the, it's problematic given that they will know each other because of basketball in New Zealand's a small community at this level, but trying to string the consistency and the chemistry together. Yeah, it's going to be difficult with a, a pretty abbreviated training camp. Uh, a lot of guys who haven't played together before. The coaches who really know their systems inside out and have a couple players that are familiar with it, I think will be to have a bit of a head start. But with as many games as you're playing, there's not going to be a lot, a ton of training time. So the guys who gel, who gel the quickest and have the easiest systems to learn that build off their skill sets are going to ha have a, quite the advantage at the start of the season. All right, gentlemen, the pick is in. And with the second pick of the third round in the NBL draft, the Taranaki Airs select Shane Temida. Shane Temida on the clock uh, is Shane Temida's former team, the Manawatu Jets. Shane Temida off to Taranaki to join Daron Rokawa and Marcel Jones. Um, he's, you know, he's an impressive forward. He's going to be a big body out there. We were looking for some bigs. Here he is. He's going to do the, do the damage for the Airs case. I like this roster that Doug Courtney, uh, interim coach of the Airs, is putting together. Yeah, it's a, a, lot of, a lot of athleticism and quickness. This is it going to be a team that's going to be able to get up and down. You know, Shane is a guy who had some real flashes of brilliance last season. Uh, I wasn't able to put it together consistently throughout the entirety of things, but we saw multiple double doubles from him and a lot of athleticism. Good finisher around the basket, has some good strength, and you know they, they were good finisher around the basket, has some good strength, and you know 
know, they, they were going to need a big with all the other bigs that everybody else is picking up. But, but as you talk, the way the roster's formed, this looks like a transition team. This looks like a team that's going to be pushing it up and down, taking it out of the basket and trying to get up the court as quickly as possible. It is the Crowd Goes Wild special. It is the Sales NBL Draft Show. That is what you're watching. We're currently now in the third round. It's hard to keep up at the moment. <laughs> the picks are flying in. Uh, on the clock are the Manawatu Jets. Hugh Bain impatiently waiting for well, the they've already taken. So we've seen them take Tom Adanovich. We've seen them take Hiram Harris. You know, guard time? Potentially. I mean, who's, who's running the point there, you know? Or bigs. Just get a whole squad of bigs. <laughs> bigs, bigs, big. bigs on bigs on bigs and, and just bruise everybody to death. That's, that's, that's a distinct possibility. Maybe that's why I'm not coaching. That's probably why you're not coaching, Casey <laughs> Frank. Absolutely. Fellas, just how happy right now are the Otago Nuggets? The, putting their hand up and getting in this league this year. What a roster they're going to have. And granted, obviously, we'd all wish we could be going around the country and going to home, home stadiums and stuff. But for those fans to watch from home and, and see this team, it's going to be phenomenal. Right, the pick is in, guys, with the third pick of the third round in the NBL draft. The Manawatu Jets select Jaden Bazant. Jaden Bazant, on the clock are the Nelson Giants. Jaden Bazant, from what I hear, a stone-cold killer with the ball in hand. Wow, surprising. Uh, pretty early. I mean, uh, another young player with a lot of talent who's going to use this stage to really try and make a name for himself. And it's, these are the players that I'm probably most interested in. Uh, some of the older guys that have had this opportunity before ha have really shown themselves to be excellent players up to this point. But it's that next generation, especially when you're getting picked in the third round with guys like Vodanovic and Harris, that he's going to have to step up and be that number three, it looks like. So at that guard position, going to be a, a, a lot of pressure on him to really help facilitate those other guys. He's an NBL rookie. He's from uh, the Junior Association of Total. Uh, St. John's College in Hamilton. He was a junior tall black in 2014. So a fantastic opportunity for Jaden Bazant and the Manawatu Jets as well. And this is the beauty of it because this draft situation that we've seen here, the weight of uh, expectation, no Southland Sharks, no Wellington Saints, no Hawks Bay Hawks. Uh, those three teams usually have strong, well-paid rosters in the scheme of things of the NBL. Now the talent is dispersed, and that's the pretty cool thing. And he's seen this, these young guys get a shot just to play at a level that is the NBL. And, and it's to play at that level, but it's also to take a certain level of responsibility that they wouldn't normally be able to get. You know, when, when you're on the end of the bench and you're a young player, there's not a lot expected of you. You, you may, might be able to not pay as close attention as you need to, but when, when you're one of the top five guys, there's a lot riding on it. You're going to have to get it done. All right, gentlemen, the pick is in with the fourth pick of the third round of the NBL draft. The Nelson Giants select Dane Brooks. Dane Brooks on the clock are the Canterbury Rams. Dane Brooks, we saw him last year really ball out for the Taranaki Airs. Uh, earned himself a contract with the Southland Sharks this year. Of course, the lead not going ahead. Finds himself playing for Mike Fitchin alongside Mika Vukona uh, and the Nelson Giants. What a fantastic spot for the young man to find himself ending up. Well, that's a, that's, um, that's a lot of basketball brains there with Fitchett, uh, obviously coaching, and then you've got Mika Vukona, just the brain to pick. Well, you know, D Dane Brooks, I, I think, was a guy who we wanted to see that development for the last couple of years. He's, uh, you know, getting around 23, 24 now. What an athlete he is. He just hasn't been able to turn that athleticism into consistent performances on the court. But with a, a coach like Mike Fitchett, with a mentor like Mika Vakona, uh, I think that's going to make things much easier for him. He's probably going to get uh, as good as the experience has been for the last few years in Taranaki. It's a little bit of a, uh, of a crash course at a higher level of basketball with Mika around there. And, you know, with the get big, Vicona Karina setting screens for him, opening up those lanes. I'd love to see him coming off those on balls, really getting to the cup and attacking that rim, using his athleticism to put pressure on defenses with those bigs getting rebounds around it. But a great opportunity for him. I was excited to see what he's going to do in Southland this year. Might be a little bit more excited to see what he does with Nelson. He's also a junior Tall Blacks teammate of Jaden Bazant, the previous pick in 2014 as well. Hugh, are you happy with the, the roster so far for the Manawatu Jets? You're a massive Jets, uh, Jets fan? I'm very happy with the roster for the Manawatu Jets. Always got faith in coach Tim McTamney. You know, it's not often a, a free agent destination. Yep. Um, put it that way, is my beloved Palmerston North, but... You know, all it takes is one good season for, for the, some of these new fellas, you know, and they enjoy wearing the beautiful green and white. Uh, and we'll see them next year down in Palmy Dice. Lovely. Anyway, the next uh, pick is in with the fifth pick of the third round in the NBL draft. The Canterbury Rams have pre-selected Joe Cook Green. On the clock for the sixth pick of the third round are the Franklin Bulls. Joe Cook Green case. 
Yeah, well, he's uh, another uh, Otago product. He's gone, gone up and got up to Christchurch, uh, played last year. He had decent averages, eight and a half points, four rebounds. Uh, at, was he at Texas Wesleyan uh, in the NCAA? So he looks like a guy who's got a, a varied skill set. And, and another one who's going to fit in with this Rams team, a lot of physicality, you know, with Jack Salt. Taylor Britt's got that shooting ability. And Joe Cook Green's looking, is he going to be the guy who's taking it to the cup? He's going to be using his slashing ability while Taylor Britt's out there shooting the three. I think McDowell putting together a nice squad so far, so far a, a lot of uh, a rounded skill set between the players he's picked up. Roughly six foot two is uh, Joe Cook Green. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the kind of situation you find yourself in uh, in Canterbury where you, you get that pre-selection. Hugh, just quickly, the pre-selections. How many are there just roughly off the top of your head coming into this draft? So, well, I don't want to give away the rest of the draft, but some teams, Canterbury being one of them... I'm asking for the names here. I'm just saying. I'm just, just trying, to, numbers. I'm just trying to fill time while the, while the picks come in. Some teams have certainly pre-selected more than others, uh, and it was, it was a really interesting... Because uh, you, you were privy to a lot of conversations. I was on the independent panel, along with um, Dylan Boucher, Jeff Flavel and Justin Nelson, and, and the way the GMs played this was very interesting. Some took a lot more risks leave themselves with open picks. Some were forced to because they didn't have the pre-selection criteria, uh, such as the Monotu Jets and, and the Otago Nuggets, right. for example, who have selected live picks for their first three rounds. Others, such as the Canterbury Rams and Nelson Giants, uh, have more of an established programme, I guess you would say, in their region, so they could pre-select uh, a few more. Um, the pick is in for one of our new teams this season, the Franklin Bulls, with the sixth pick of the third round in the NBL draft. The Franklin Bulls select Everard Bartlett. Everard Bartlett. On the clock, uh, the Auckland Huskies. Vets. vets, 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 vets. Everard Bartlett, a staple of uh, Hawks Bay Hawks teams for years, and he's played in the Aussie NBL as well. He's been uh, in the Tall Blacks too. Everard Bartlett, along with Sam Timmons and Dal Dom Kalman Potto. Getting longer in the tooth, but uh, that has not changed the wetness of that jump shot. I'll tell you that right <laughs> now. Uh, Ev, Ev is a, a pure scorer. He's a guy who can light it up at any point in time. You know, I was actually surprised that he didn't get a bit more playing time with Hawks Bay last year. As, as compact as their roster was, he was a guy who you would expected to be able to help them, especially in the finals. Didn't get as much time as he probably would have liked, but I think this year, looking with Bulls, you know, he's, he's just a hoops junkie, man. He's down there. He's teaching the kids in, in the Hawks Bay area. He's teaching them a lot of uh, skill set. He's really taken over that mantle from Porto Winatana and his academy to teach that next generation. And, and you look at matching him up with DKP and Sam Timmons. Ev's going to be that shooter on the outside, clearing out the space for him uh, and, and really using that jump shot to open up the paint for the big Timmons to get things done and DKP with the slashing. My favourite thing about Evie Bartlett is just he just loves to hoop. Yeah. Like, Case, you bumped into it at the multinationals when you were there shooting a story. Um, and he's, he's got a former tall black, you know. He's just still there, still hooping. He looks in fantastic shape. Uh, I just love, that's my <laughs> in the, in the Auckland Huskies to start us off in the fourth round. So here's the, Leon Henry, of course, was, you know, one of the big signings for the, uh, for the Franklin Bulls pre the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, and since... That and since the start of this, yeah. he's changed teams. He's gone off to the Huskies. So uh, that and since the start of this, he's changed teams. He's gone off to the Huskies. So uh, already we get a great rivalry in the big right. city. It's fantastic. Uh, but that's the kind of thing. And I know, like, we don't like to talk about these kind of things, but it's it's part of the character. The fourth round in the South NBL draft of 2020, the Auckland Huskies have pre-selected Tane Murray. So from veteran to youth, from Leon Henry to Tane Murray, that's two good selections there for the Auckland Huskies. On the, on the clock are the Franklin Bulls. Lot of promise with Tane <laughs> promise, Murray. There it is. Tane Murray is a name that will be in New Zealand basketball for a long time. Well, he's a guy who got a taste of Tall Blacks basketball last year. Uh, they're bleeding in the next generation of player. And while Tane, as talented as he is, he hasn't shown it on that level to be able to be a dominant player. You can understand why he's gone in the fourth round. But certainly, if he does capitalise on that promise, he is a, a future star of New Zealand. Draft, the Franklin Bulls have selected Jackson Stubbins. Jackson Stubbins. On the clock are the Canterbury Rams. So Jackson Stubbins, that's going to be uh, impressive there. More youth. So that's uh, a, looking at that, that's looked like the guards lineup set up now. Jack, going to have to be playing a little bit of point guard, it looks like, uh, picking up on this team. Co-captain of the Manitou Jets for the last couple of years, and there was a bit of a mix-up, I believe, in terms of his work and getting time off, hence not being pre-selected. The balls are swooped. Right, guys, while we're here, why don't we head over to one of our first-round draft picks? Uh, the fourth pick in the NBL draft, of course, Mick of Vakona with the Nelson Giants. 
And I think we can cross to Mecca from... There he is, having a swig. Oh. There he is. Now, that is a lie of a background, because I know you're in quarantine, hey. Mecca. There is Mecca Vicona. Why don't you show us the hotel room? <laughs> you didn't want to tidy your hotel room, did you? <laughs> no. This is Tahuna Beach in Nelson. <laughs> Look, I've got a lot of time to, to think and play around, so, yeah. Hey, Mika. How's things, guys? Uh, really good, man. Uh, great to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time out. But also, um, as a basketball fan, first and foremost for myself, hey, thank you for coming to play in the Sales NBL for 2020, man. Uh, it means a lot to not only fans, but also the league to have someone with your experience and your stature. What does it mean to you to come back and play? Uh, no brainer, really. Um, I'm pretty lucky to be part of a little WhatsApp group with uh, Casey. And when you started hearing these guys start talking about ba playing basketball, how good it was, um, you know, having 10 weeks off in isolation, I just couldn't help it. Um, you know, we're pretty lucky to have this all organised and, you know, seeing the draft out here right now, it's a pretty cool thing. So, uh, yeah, it was a no-brainer for me. It's got to be a little bit of a dream come true to actually come in and get three games a week and limited practices. I mean, uh, this is what I, you, me and you were just talking about this as all we ever wanted when we were playing together, and now it's actually come true for you. Man, it, it, that's a dream situation, bro. We know practices like Alan Iverson is just practice, right? You don't need it. Uh, so really looking forward to it and just playing games back to back. It's like tournaments that we used to do when we were uh, young kids, so looking forward to it. And one of the things I wonder about with you, Mika, obviously you've got a, a great uh, head for the game. You've got a lot of knowledge in there. Uh, how excited are you to teach that next generation of Nelson basketballer uh, to share that information that was shared with you as you were coming up and, and help pass that torch for New Zealand basketball? Yeah, that's another big uh, proponent for me coming back as well. You know, um, I felt uh, the year in the ABL was a good learning curve for me still at that age, but it was... Um, just been able to go out and give back what, uh, what I've been able to pick up. You know, uh, when I came through in 2000, it was the Phil Jones, it was uh, Ned Vucinich, Ralph Lattimore, uh, great guys that, were, that was in New Zealand. And so hopefully I can, um, I guess, give that back. So looking forward to it, man. Hey, Mecca, thanks very much for your time tonight, mate. Great to see you back. Look forward to seeing you back out on the, on the uh, hardwood. Mecca Vicona there. Thanks, Mecca. Keep working on that tan. The great thing is that... Ralph yeah, Lattimore. Thanks, brother. <laughs> he, he said Ralph Lattimore. That's gone back. Ralph Lattimore, Nina Boosten, it's that golden era than Nelson. Awesome. The great thing is that his uh, Wi Fi is as smooth as his free throw. So that's. <laughs> oh, oh! He's oh, gone, though. He's gone, right? No, he's still, right? no man. He's still, he's still, he heard that. I hear, wait, well, I hear he's breaking quarantine to come after you. <laughs> <laughs> he would. All right, guys, we've got some pre selects we can go through now uh, with the uh, third pick in the fourth round. The Canterbury Rams have pre selected Alex Talmer. And with the fourth pick in the fourth round, the Nelson Giants have pre-selected Tom Ingham. And with the fifth pick in the fourth round, the Manawatu Jets have pre-selected Dane Samuel. So there's some names there. We've seen this as some real up-and-coming names in New Zealand basketball, Miles. Do you like these picks that you see? What one stands out the most to you, Casey Frank? Well, I think in terms of potential, it's, it's Dane Samuel. Uh, I should just quickly say the Taranaki ears are on the clock. Sure. D Dane, the, his gift for basketball and the soft touch that he has is really impressive. Uh, for the Rams, I like what they're doing physically. You know, Alex Talma, Jack Salt together in the front line sort of does what they did had last year with Mike Carina, but Jack Salt going a little bit bigger, a bit stronger probably. That's going to be a physical team when you put it around those other guys. So we'll see who, how they finish out. They're going to need a little bit more scoring. And, and Tom Ingen, you know, he's been a, a Nelson staple for a while now. Uh, great to see him coming down. You know, he's an Otago guy, has gone up to Nelson for the last couple of years, but uh, has a long career. Also a cricket rep. Is that right? That is wow. That's a good stat. You, that's, well, that's Mike Fitchett-esque. Because yeah. Mike Fitchett, I believe, was the same when he was a young Nelsonian as well. Cricket rep as, uh, as well. Uh, Dane Samuel, can I quickly jump in? Last year, Casey, when we saw him playing for the Jets, big body, not afraid to use it, threw down some huge dunks and monstered some guys who were far older and far uh, more senior than him in New Zealand basketball. So really excited to see him back with the Jets, remembering, of course, that he had signed uh, for the Wellington Saints ahead of this season. Uh, so the Jets striking gold with that one and getting Dane 
back to play with that impressive first three picks they took today. Uh, we've, we're almost finishing up round four. We've got round five to go. You're watching The Crow Goes Wild. It sells NBA draft special. Uh, part two of the draft is happening from 7.30, Hugh. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of a draft party. Draft so we, party, all, the, all these teams are having draft parties. We thought, you know, we're going to jump in on the act as well. So right we're going to have a wee break, you know, catch the news, watch Crow Goes Wild, of course. Uh, and then from 7.30, we're going to be at Sal's Pizzeria in Parnell. Dylan Boucher, uh, MNZM, is going to join us as well, as will uh, lead Commissioner General Manager Justin Nelson, and we'll go through the rest of those picks. That'll be on the New Zealand NBL Facebook page and on Sky Sport Next, as well as stuff.co.nz and the Tribe Sports app. So, a little bit more casual. I'm going to lose the jacket, lose the shirt. Oh, Don't wow. worry, I'll put a T-shirt on instead. And then we're going to sit back, eat some pizza, you know, have a Coke and, and do, uh, well, do the rest of the picks. Well, from but Casey for... and I's experience, when you lose the jacket, whew, you're basically <laughs> Frank the Tank. And it's also, game over. Just in case our wives are watching, it's serious work we're going on to do. Oh, sorry, yeah. Party to eat pizza. Oh, no, it's work. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely a work gathering. <laughs> Who are you liking so far, Case? Uh, you know, it, it, it's tough to say it's trying to put it all together in your head, but I'm interested to see who Otago finishes up with because I really like the scoring that they've put together there. Uh, I think the, the size of Nelson with, yeah. along with that experience is going to be quite good. But uh, the Huskies, are, I think, are the most intriguing team for me right now because I don't know exactly the style they're going to play. With, with KB, Kevin Braswell as their coach, I, I do expect it to be pretty up-tempo. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun. It will be interesting to see if they're able to do it for three full games, week in, week out, with uh, how, however deep they're going to be able to go and get it done. But it's certainly a lot of intrigue across the board. It's going to take some time to get my head around it. I think I, I, think I saw it in the rundown for Crago's Wild at 7 p.m. on Prime. We may be going to the Huskies draft party. Uh, I'm not sure if that's still in the rundown, but if we want to see what the Huskies are like. I mean, how to, you know, make an impression. Uh, I think they're at Event Finder Stadium on Auckland's North Shore, which in Auckland is the, one of the hotbeds of basketball, as we know. It's a factory. Spiritual home. We've got some, great, got some great schools that have produced some great players. Westlake boys, Rosmini of, of late, you know. Bring your Toto. Bring your Toto. Bring up there. Yeah. yeah. We're waiting for the Taranaki years to make their pick. I want to talk briefly about the Nelson Giants, because they came in with, like I said earlier, one of the more heavily pre-selected teams. Mm -hmm. uh, so they pre-selected Mickey Bacona and Mike Carino, of course and Tom Ingram in the fourth round. So that third round pick for them, their only life pick so far, became really important, right? Because you, what I told you about strategy earlier, yeah. leaving picks open is a bit risky. You don't know who you're going to get, but you could get someone better than who you might have pre-selected. Well, they took the risk in the third round. They got Dane Brooks. So I think Mike Fitch will be really happy. He'll be really now, happy with that. The next pick is in with a sixth pick of the fourth round in the NBL draft. The Taranaki Airs select Ty Winyard. Ty, Ty Winyard. Winyard. On the clock are the Otago Nuggets. Ty Winyard, uh, University of Kentucky. He's come back. I think he had some serious injuries that he deal with. Uh, back injuries as well. And Ty Winyard, um, hopefully he can get some more playing time because he was involved uh, with the Aussie NBL uh, last, yeah. up in Cairns but didn't see much playing time, if any at all. No, he's t had to reset his career a little bit from what everyone thought it would be. Uh, I think uh, Kentucky, as great a school as it is, m m might have been a difficult place for him to develop his game. But, uh, but uh, you know, as a, a physical player, he's got so much, uh, it's so much untapped potential. It's going to be great to see if he right, can guys, get in shape and really get it done. I'm going to jump in. We've got the next pick in. We've got a motor along here with the seventh pick of the fourth round in the NBL draft. The Otago Nuggets has selected Kane Keel. On the clock remain the Otago Nuggets. Kane Keel there, Casey. This is an intriguing one. Yeah, he's uh, more of a swing position, so you, you expect to see him. I haven't seen him since he's gone to the States and, and played over there, but when he was uh, before he left as a young player, had a real nice deft touch for the game. You know, he could, he could drive, he could get to the hole, he could shoot the basket uh, from the three-point line. Uh, he needed to get work on his body a little bit, which is basically what you go to college to do, <laughs> is work on your body. You go from being a boy to a man. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of shape he comes back in. And you look at that team, I mean, uh, uh, in terms of skill set, similar. Similar to what Jordan Naitai had as a smaller player, mm -hmm. though. He's got that inside-outside game, but more of a slasher dribbling and getting to the cup. All right, guys, got to jump in there. Firstly, to say that I certainly did not work on my body at college. And second of all, well, you, you did, start but just with beers. The fifth round with the first pick of the fifth round in the NBL draft, the Otago Nuggets have pre-selected Josh Aitchison on the clock. 
uh, the Taranaki Airs. Josh Aitchison, local lad, sticking with um, the Otago Nuggets. I saw a good article from Josh in the ODT uh, earlier, uh, sorry, late last year when the announcement that the Nuggets would be coming back. Team they've put together. That, that is another team that's looking like it's uh, trying to get up and down. You know, that's a, a, lo a lot of quickness on the wings. You don't really have a true big uh, Jordan Hunt. Uh, we thought maybe he would be paired with somebody else big, but they're going to have to go uh, a little bit smaller. You guys got to jump in there, sorry, with the second pick of the fifth round in the NBL draft. The Taranaki Airs have pre-selected Mitch Dance. On the clock are the Manawatu Jets, Andrew. Mitch Dance, put on your... You with me? Oh, yeah. Well, we're, we're, you know, it's Craig as well. We're a little bit late. In you know, what, I knew you were going to do something there, but I'm pleasantly surprised you went for that one. That's yeah, great. right. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. But no, congratulations to Mitch Dance for being uh, selected there. So he joins Ty Winyard, Shane Tamara, uh, Marcel, Marcel Jones, and Daron Rokawa. You like that five because now we're getting into the point now. Uh, a lot of youth at those guard <laughs> positions, so certainly going to be depending on Hiram Harris and Tom Vodanovic. Up front is Tim McTammany to be the, lead this team from the front. It's going to be interesting to see how those guards come together. A lot of pressure on them in the backcourt. I uh, went to trial for the Manor 2 Jets early this year and Nick Fee broke several of my ankles. With the <laughs> fourth on you, Nick. pick in the fifth round in the NBL showdown draft, the Nelson Giants have pre-selected Josh Bloxham. JB! Josh On the B. clock of the Canterbury Rams. Josh Bloxham, of course, King Breakers fans will remember from the championship run. He was a development player for a few of those championships there. And great to see him back with Nelson. Awesome. Yep. Good to see him back playing basketball at this level. I don't think he has been in uh, the NBL since when he was at the Rangers in 2016, yep. maybe in his last season. Uh, was a... Uh, you know, professional citizen, <laughs> you could say. So, um, but reigniting the accountant. Yes, important phone call from Mike Fitcher to, to get Josh Bloxham back out on the hardwood. And Josh I can't B. wait to see him play again. All right, guys, we have to that move on awesome. to the fifth pick because it is in. It's already in. With the fifth pick of the fifth round of the NBL draft, the Canterbury Rams have pre-selected Sam Smith. On the clock are the Franklin Bulls. Todonga Boys College played for the Rams last year as well, so McDowner going with what he knows. That's the pre-selection uh, criteria coming in there. And also another guy who spent some time in the college game playing across overseas. And, of course, he, he played a little bit in Switzerland as well, so finished the season up here. There are tall fern Panina Davison as well. So uh, great to see Isaac Davison returning from college to come back and play uh, over here. But more importantly than uh, being Panina's younger brother is that he averaged 15 points a game at Sonoma State last year. He's a, a larger guard. He's got some good size on him. He's going to be a physical player, uh, has, has the ability to shoot and as well as drive to the hole. Uh, and his physicality is great for that team. I think uh, you're looking at a big, strong team yeah. uh, with that Franklin Bulls now. Everard Bartlett, the experienced Sam Timmons, Dom, Kalman, Porto, Jackson Stubbins, and now Isaac Davidson. Oh, wow, you let me finish you. Thank you. So Sorry. <laughs> You got another pick? Well, we do, but we're, yes. we're hoping to head over to uh, another quarantined individual soon when he's ready, uh, that being Kevin oh, Braswell of yes. the Auckland Huskies. In fact, I think we can do it now. Kevin Braswell from quarantine somewhere in Auckland made his way back from the US of A where he's been completing his studies at Georgetown University. There he is. Hello, KB. KB. Hey, Hi, fellas. How are you, how are you guys? Oh, we're good. We're good. Miles is a bit salty. Keep cutting him off, but, you know. <laughs> it's been a long hour. It's been a long hour. But, hey, you're in quarantine. That's a lot longer. Hey. Congratulations on the roster oh. that you're putting together at the moment. Should we do the pick? Yeah, let's do the oh, pick. Do the pick. I appreciate it. KB, you make your last pick of the first five rounds for us, please, for the Auckland Huskies. In the seventh pick of the fifth round, you select... Rashid al -Kameen. Rashid al -Kameen. The fifth round. That's all. Talk us through that pick, KB. Okay, we might just get, try and get you back, we'll KB. You I heard a rebound. I heard he likes to rebound and stuff. Rashid al Kameen, he is uh, a friend of... Oh, no, see, that's, uh, that's our Sky Wi-Fi. <laughs> you probably can't see the error on the screen there, but that's, we've seen that before working around here. But he is part of the Breakers organisation. Yeah, he's very um, close friends, has been for a long time with Breakers owner Matt Walsh. I believe they played at University of Florida together. I always get Florida State and Florida right. I was, you're, you're right. They're University of Florida there. Yeah, he's um, he's kind of been de facto sort of team manager since the late, great uh, Fatou Latour passed away last year. So he's a key part of that organisation. But I'll tell you what, you look at that team, uh, the 3 4 5 spot, that's a lot of size, a, a lot of strength. Mm. You know, with uh, Leon, with Tohi, Tane, and Isaiah are, are going to be running the guard spots. But Rashid is a physical player who uh, fans over here won't know a lot about him, but I've been had the privilege of playing him a few Wednesdays. Uh, we've been running up and down, having some uh, 
ball there, but physical player, his, his shot has really come along. You know, it's strange, you spend all that time in the gym, the shot comes back. So uh, he's gonna be another guy who can shoot the basketball and get up and down in transition with a lot of athleticism. All right, guys, that is the first five rounds. Let's look ahead to the next seven. Round six to 12 will be streamed from 7.30 p.m. on Sky Sport Next Tribe Stuff at NZNB on Facebook. Uh, Casey and I, along with Dylan Boucher and Justin Nelson, will be at South Pizzeria in Parnell. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be great, can't wait. And somebody who would have loved this was Leon Taylor, the basketball Yeti. He yes. would have been all over this. Uh, rest in love, basketball Yeti. Um, you're a great fan and a great friend around all the basketball arenas around uh, Auckland. Absolutely, absolutely. He was a huge fan of Auckland basketball uh, and Auckland in general. So we can't wait for the uh, sales and be able to get ready on June the 23rd here in Auckland. Thanks to our partners, AT. Five double headers a week for six weeks. Basketball Nirvana in Tamaki Makoto. Back. Thanks Eat, to sleep, 18, drink, hoops. Our partners. It's going to be fantastic. That is it for the first five.